Hello, my name is Martin Brown. I'm a senior solution consultant at Sage Intact. Today we'll be looking at the collections module that is available to Sage Intact customers. Look at the highlights of what the collections module will provide. Structure your collection process with intelligent task management. Organize your collections in one place. Improve collections and re reduce your DSO. The typical problems I certainly have experienced in the past. Credit control is managed offline. It's probably done in spreadsheets or Word documents or even worse, it could be in um, handheld notes or in a notebook. There's no or very little collaboration between either people that are in the intact solution or outside that intact, or even sort of like discussions with any third parties. There's no visibility of any actions that are needed or has taken place. And that is important for management to see whether action has been taken. There's no time and metrics on performance on a day to day basis. Information is disjointed, whether it's handled in handheld notes or on spreadsheets. Information can be held in different places, avoided by different people. So what we're going to do now is look at the intact solution. OK, so I've signed into Intact and from my preference settings, I've selected this dashboard um, as my landing or starting page. There are three dashboards um, within the collections module. Um, you can see that there are those extra true for the detailed and metrics, which we'll come to in a moment. But we're going to be starting off with the credit control dashboard. So in the credit control dashboard, what have I got? I've got um, my assigned collection cases by case rating. And here we can say see that the case rate calculated case rate. Uh, we've got a couple of areas where we can drill down to either the case or the customer details. We can see the, the total amount which is due from the customer. We can see what the oldest invoice is, whether they've been decided to sell, where we've got a follow up, and we see we've got a date in that one. And of course, this is in the view of um, we're seeing that these in what Emma's got as, uh, as assigned. So we just drop down to the next ones. We're now seeing AI invoices by invoice rating. So some for, uh, similar information that we're seeing there, we can drill down on the customer or the, uh, the actual invoice itself. We're seeing that calculated rating, which it is a, um, a combination of the value of the invoice and the, the aging of it as well. So we can see the total value of the invoice. We'll see whether any, any rate is paid on, on an account, whether we've got a dunning notice in, we can see we're further on down there and whether we've got any promised dates there. So we can again, drill down on the invoice. Just dropping down again, and we're seeing anything that's unassigned. So that might be kind of important that we need to assign it to someone to start chasing up. Now it's coming to the case rating. As soon as these invoices become due, a case rating is calculated and that value will go up as the aging of the invoice um, goes on. And I've got a few things. We've got the aging report. We've got our tasks that have been assigned, uh, any notes that have been on the, cust on the customer accounts. We've got a comparison of our top 10, which obviously is important to see well, which are the, the priority ones. And again, we've got it in graphical view as well. So now let's just jump up to that um, top view or top component that we got. And we see that we've got at the top of our priorities is the Kansas City Power. Uh, we can drill down again on the case or the customer. Let's drill down on the case. Let's just maximize that view. So what we're seeing along the top here is we've got some, some summary data that we've got our total invoices are $43,770. Dollars 41 cents. We're seeing that we've got 12 invoices. All 12 invoices are due. We're seeing what the oldest due date of the invoice, um, etc. And we'll see um, whether any payments have been made. 
So then that's dropped down into that section that shows us our AI invoices. So we can see the currency, we've got um, an invoice stage, so we're at um, all these collection stages are all configurable. So what we'll be doing there is as these debts are chased, we will be managing the collection stage. We do that by using this Manage Collections button at the top here. So this enables us to uh, update invoices one by one, or we could do a, a mass update of invoices by just selecting those boxes to say which ones we want. So we can go in to say, uh, select those two invoices, go to the update and choose our relevant um, new stage that we're going on to. But so we're not going to uh, up change those for now, we're just going to just cancel that and come out. So that's one example of it, but let's have, a, have another look. So this time I'm going to select the medical research technology. So we've got, again, we've got the case study. We've also can see um, that this is also coming up in our um, tasks. So I could select either one of those panes to drop down into. So on this one, let's, let's select um, the task itself for medical research. So there's two ways we can do it. We can do it by just clicking on the task itself and then going and selecting the relevant um, option for that task where it's been completed. And then you can add a comment to that task. So we could do that, or alternatively, we could jump to the customer account. Again, maximize that pane. So this time we see that we've got a collections tab against the customer information setup. So this time we go to our collections, we scroll down to our actions. We can go into the edit function, which enables then to change it here to the relevant one, if that's the case. So therefore, what you're seeing there is the ability to manage your tasks. So these tasks can be automated, um, so that you have that kind of flow. Um, you get that priority. Um, you can you can log the priority against it against it's against the task. It also is recorded against the invoice and also against the case notes. So there's a couple of areas you can do that to, to manage that all in one place. So let's just come out of that one. And the last one I was going to use was um, the Bayer Corporation. So we've got Bayer showing here in the cases that we've got outstanding. We've also got Bayer uh, coming against the invoice. So we can see against Bayer here, we've actually started a dunning process on here. So we can, again, we can go down to that account. Or I know that I happen to know that we've got um, a note recorded. So let's have a look at this time at the note um, against the um, customer. So we could save the box, we could go to the edit, um, if I have to save or with the call to say, right, have we now got a promise date? Have they now confirmed the promise date is will be paid, etc.? Have we got any approvals that we want to, uh, to do that to make sure that if we're going to give a um, a date of which then it's going to be paid. We're going over the terms that we want an approval process, um, we'll process step in there to do that. So that's just come out of that one. So that's a couple of ways there that in the dashboard you can manage that. You can see that a lot, all of these panes are all drilled down and enabled from various different parts. Um, and again, you can use the, obviously the graphical information to drill down as well. So we're going to now move on to the next dashboard. So I can scroll from here. And this time I'm going to choose the detailed um, view. So slightly different view, but there are some similar um, content in there. So this time what we're doing here is we're using the maximum the use of our performance card. So we can see during the month how we are progressing with us to see how we're improving, whether up and down against previous periods and stuff like that. Um, same way that we can drill down to other panes, and we've got a few here now, options to see the data or manage our team's activity in credit control. So we can see here, do they have the right credit workload? 
is it unfairly distributed? We can reassign cases, etc. Or a case that there may be some risk that certain um, credit controllers are good at handling um, accounts with a certain higher risk and stuff like that. Um, and you can see for yourselves that we've got quite a bit of nice data that we can actually use to manage and get improve uh, our collections. And the final one is that we use the metrics, a lot more kind of metrics uh, that we saw before, more graphical. So this is more designed for your managers to be able to hold that information, stuff like that. So that is the use of the dashboards. Um, we then go into our collections uh, menu and we can see here that's how we can obviously go into our cases we don't necessarily have to do them from the uh, dashboard we can we can access them from here exactly the same way that we can drill down to the data or um, I could then also go to our collections and we can see here how we've got daily notice in process we've got one here that shows that um, all those daily notices have so far have been active on the buyer okay we started off with the the, the gentle approach or the courtesy notice to say to realize obviously your your invoice is coming due and then we've moved on to one of the last stages before we we move this to legal action so there's there's more uh, rich functionality in there for that um, I'm just gonna we can go into more details on um, a discovery session or on a demonstration following it from understanding exactly your needs we'll just jump into the collections configuration here to just to show the where or how we can configure um, the, the thing to apply for yourself so if they've done any notice do you want them enabled etc do you want statements uh, how you want your emails and stuff like that so emails can either be activated within the application or you could um, upload from you maybe your outlook or your gmail uh, in, in emails to the application as well so that was a very quick kind of guide to what the collections module um, contains um, it could be useful what i'm just going to do there is pause there i'm going to move into a little bit of a summary to what we've covered off So just to summarize what the collections module will provide, streamline, automate your collection process, shorten the cash cycle with increasing accuracy, improve customer relations, improve cash forecasting by ensuring customers pay terms. And you're seeing all that data for reminder all in one place. Hopefully you found today useful. Um, if you want any more further look into the collections module, Please speak to your account manager, account executive, and uh, we can arrange a follow-up with that. Thank you.